It's a difficult and challenging question, mainly because out of the 4,200 transplants that we identified, about 500 of them were pediatric transplants, and of those, only nine were combined heart-liver transplants, and about 26 were combined heart-kidney transplants. That's the entire U.S. experience. This is a UNOS database between 2000 and 2013, so it seems like an infinitesimally small number, but it's the largest experience that there is in the world, essentially. Because in our congenital population, we have so many patients with failing Fontans, and as we heard yesterday, uh, with some of the excellent speeches about um, liver pathology in Fontans, there's gonna be an increasing tide of these patients. And so we really wanted to focus on a way to triage patients so that if they need combined transplantation strategies, we could um, recommend that at an earlier stage. So we tried to create a score that would be better than some of the um, scores that are already out there, the MELD-XI, which we heard about yesterday, the traditional MELD score, which has not been really applicable to children, the PELD score, which is the pediatric equivalent of that, nothing has really been able to discriminate which patients would benefit from a combined strategy. So we created a propensity model where we would say, these are all the variables that predict patients that are most likely to get heart livers, and then we tested that score. And it had very, very good discrimination. The problem is, is because of the small number of patients, we weren't able to say definitively this is better than what's out there already. One of the recommendations going forward would be one, we need a larger sample size, and two, we need to supplement the UNOS data set from data from the individual institutions that have done the heart liver thing so that we have recent INRs. We have Billy Rubin and Albumin, but we don't have some of the other imaging data that I think is going to be key. Heart kidney transplant, if it's done in patients who have, in our study, the lowest quintile of kidney function, and we measured it by um, estimated glomerular filtration rate, if you identify patients with a low GFR, and in our study it was a cut point of about 44, those patients actually do better with combined transplantation than if you have the strategy, we're going to transplant the heart and see if the kidney recovers by increased cardiac output. So I think the bottom line is that in those patients, their kidneys are already so abnormal that even with an increased cardiac output, their kidneys are not going to perform as well. And I think that led to a lot of the um, mortality in the isolated heart transplant recipients.